show you the problem. Good morning, people of the internet. Um, today, I've got a problem. Um, and the problem's with the S3. It's a weird one. Very, very weird one. So what's basically happening is, and there's no fault codes, VCDS is not bringing anything up, but when I get to 6,500 revs, it's like an electronic cutoff. Um, it just, it's just like an Omex system, that kind of thing, where it's just cutting the power, and gets to about 4,000 and cuts back in again. Kind of feels like an electronic cut, but there's no, well there is a rev limiter on this, but um, it's about seven. It, uh, you can usually get to seven, bounce it off the red line on seven, and uh, it's fine, it doesn't complain at all. But yeah, lately, and I, only over the past, I guess, week really, um, yeah, you get to six and a half and it just cuts. Um, I've got some ideas, it could be the math, I believe. Uh, could be a vacuum leak, I also believe. Um, or it could be the PCV valve. Um, but there's a few things I've got in my mind. But what I'm going to do is I'll show you the fault and then we'll uh, dive into trying to work it out. Um, yeah, this is going to be um, quite a long one, I think. So we're up to temperature. Let's get on this road and. Uh, See if I can show you what I mean. Here we go. Obviously something electrical there. Um, as you can see, everything cut out. Even um, the oil pressure light came on. I have no idea what the hell's going on. Um, but yeah, that's that's not good. Um, let me just see if we can replicate it again. I'm sure we can. As you can see it's not good um, it feels like it's electrical um, and certainly from the way it cut out like that and was you know bouncing and, and messing about um, and then obviously well all sorts of things started happening lights started coming on all over the place it does feel like electrical um, but I'm gonna start diving in um, who knows could be anything like a, a duff connection it could be an ECU, I really don't know. Uh, and the problem is, um, VCDS is not bringing up any fault codes. <sighs> this is this is going to be a long one. Definitely going to be a long one. Right, struck up VCDS. Let's, uh, let's have a look and see if anything came up this time. Right, uh, so I've got an engine speed sensor, implausible signal. Um, is that connected to the other problem? Is it? Uh, is it the problem? I, I don't know. Okay, so looking at the issue that is being reported on VCDS, and then looking at Rostec, um, it's. Pointing it could be the engine speed sensor, which I think also is the crank angle sensor. Uh, 
it's saying there that one of the possible symptoms is engine shuts off which yeah it's definitely doing uh, engine doesn't start well that no, starts okay um, speed on with it in there speedos okay so it's a lead but um, yeah let's keep digging okay so I cleared the code it hasn't come back um, so I don't know it, it's a lead let's keep digging okay so what I'm going to do now is run an auto scan um, this will bring up all the fault codes there's a couple I know about um, but yeah, let's see if there's any new ones as well, apart from the one I've just found. So, there's the codes. Um, I can see the ABS has come up. I know I've got a problem there. There's a sensor that's um, intermittent. Uh, all seems to work okay. I think it's a rear sensor that's the problem. Uh, the HVAC, there's a switch on there that uh, yeah seemed to fail a little while ago. Uh, again, all works okay, but um, it's coming up with an open circuit. And the last one is uh, the navigation. Uh, not the last one, but the, the radio as well, navigation and radio. And that's basically because I've swapped out the radio. Um, and uh, I don't know the code for the old one. I should really do that and sort that out. But it's never bothered me. It's never been a problem. Um, so, that doesn't give me a lot to go on. Uh, that I don't already know. Um, so the only clue I've got is uh, is the one that we've already found. Interesting. I need to do some research, I think. So I went away and had a little think and played the Google lottery, which is basically putting a error code into Google and see what trash comes up. But there was a couple of interesting things there, and uh, it kind of did lead me down the direction that the crank sensor may be the problem here. <laughs> It obviously came up on the engine diagnostics and it hasn't done that before so it's the first time I've seen it but looking at a couple of other garage videos um, they had the same problem where an intermittent fault only comes up now and again but it does the same sort of thing um, gives you like a like an electronic cut of the ignition for the simple reason that the timing doesn't know where to put it himself the injection doesn't know where to put it itself because literally it's getting nothing back from the crank to say you know, when it should fire when it should spark and when it should throw fuel at the engine. So what I've got to look for now is the crank angle sensor um, which is tucked right there in the bottom so I'm going to have a look from up top first and then have a look down bottom uh, probably take the bottom panel out jack the car up have a good look and uh, see if I can find it get a part number off it and uh, get it replaced. So, yeah, <laughs> first look, um, I think I've got to hit it from the underneath. Uh, there ain't no way I'm going to find it looking down there at all. Safety first. And of course the safety second. Okay, the bottom panel's off. It's now just a case of trying to find out where the crank angle sensor is. Um, I believe it's somewhere up in there but I can't see it at the moment so I've got to have a hunt around I may need to take some of these pipes off right let's have a good look around so my suspicions are I'm not sure if you can see this there's a green plug up there my suspicions are that is where it is um, so yeah I think this surge pipe's got to come off which if I remember is not the easiest of jobs uh, oh well uh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be right let's, um, let's get this pipe out of the way so I'm not going to film every part of taking this uh, pipe off because that would be really boring and my videos are boring enough apparently already um, so just the top tip if you haven't got yourself a set of these get yourself a set because what they do you can open them up really wide and you put them on these, whoops, easy to do with one hand, of course, why do I do this, I don't know. So, that cap goes on there, that one goes <laughs> on there like that, like a 
So why do I do this with one hand? And basically, you ratchet it up, it holds it, like so, and you slip them off without the things pinging off or your vice grip slipping or anything like that. It's the easy way to do it. So there you go. That's what you need. A set of these. And of course, there's always that one awkward bolt that you need to get to. Right just there. Yeah. Good fun. I stand corrected. There's almost those two awkward bolts you need to get to. There's another one in there somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. And of course, dropping the nut into the fan assembly is obligatory. And there it goes. Push. Push. It's out. One cooler pipe. Off. Right, does that give me better access? Oh. Good day. Yeah, what do you think guys? Does that look like a crank angle sensor? Mm. Could be, but I have to say, I'm not sure. So I would say that is the little blighter just in there, not the green plug up there. I was wrong. It's tucked right in there. Yeah. So the oil filters there. All this gubbins is here. And that looks like the crank sensor in there. And that's what I'm aiming for. This is going to be tricky. So after a bit of poking around, I think I've got to take that bolt out there where that green plug is. That is a bracket that holds the crank sensor plug on. And that's going to give me a little bit more access to the crank sensor itself. Which is right in there. Right, so let's get that off. So that's the bracket out of the way. And of course it wasn't in the slightest an absolute pain in the backside. But there you go. Alright, um, so now um, it looks like, uh, I can't even see what bolt it is, um, maybe you can, can you tell me guys, what is it <laughs> please, I'm guessing it's something like a 10 mil. Uh, let me try, the crank sensor looks to be there and that's what I need to get out, well, I've got it loose and you're right guys, it was, oh, huh. I'm going to say it was a 10 mil, it's kind of a 10 mil with yeah, that in it. Right, the moment of truth. Will the sensor come out? Oh, I'd love to take you through this, but to be honest, I need both hands. I need to concentrate. Bear with. Well, that was, of course, no fun whatsoever, but there it is. The crank angle sensor. Um, I'm not seeing any damage, but of course, they wear out. And that's probably what this has just done. So, there it is. It's out. Well, I'll be honest guys, this is going to be a, a part two. Um, putting it in and making sure that everything works okay. I mean, the car did start, but it was running pretty rough. Either wasn't great. And as you saw from the video earlier, uh, you hit a certain revs and it went ballistic. So, I'm hoping that is the problem. Everything points to it being the problem. Um, I'll try and find a way of testing it just to confirm that. Um, but now I've got to order one. I needed to get it out first because there's a couple of angle sensors that you could actually get for this car. <laughs> of course, it's Audi. Um, so I want to get the part number off it, make sure I order the right one and uh, put the new one in and then see where we go from there. But thanks for joining me. I'll catch you in part two. Laters. <laughs>